Please welcome creator, writer, criminal madman, Dan Erickson. Whoa. There you go, Dan. That's you right there. Thank you. Hi. Hello. First time? Yeah. First time at Comic-Con. <laughs> now, please uh, welcome, also making, weirdly enough, his Comic-Con debut, I couldn't believe it when I heard it, actor, comedian, writer, director, genius, Ben Stiller! Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, Britt Lauer. Britt Lauer, ladies and gentlemen. Actor, comedian, everything, Mr. Adam Scott. Ladies and gentlemen, Deachin Lackman. From so many things that you've seen and loved, Jen Tullock. Jen Tullock, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, uh, the friendliest, most concerned, and scariest thing at Lumon. Please put your hands together for Trammell Tillman. Trammell Tillman, ladies and gentlemen. The whole thing was just born of, of my own corporate misery. Uh, I, I was uh, working a string of jobs when I first moved to LA that were a string of just various weirder and weirder office jobs and uh, caught myself sort of walking in one day and was like, God, if I could just like skip ahead eight hours and, and just be done with this and I would totally willingly give up that time of my life, you know, that precious time here on earth. Uh, and and uh, it was kind of a messed up thing to catch myself wishing for. And so I was like, I think that should be a show. I, I was lucky enough to uh, be handed the script uh, through Jackie Cohn, who's a creative executive who read it and, and who's here today, an amazing, amazing uh, person. And she has great taste, and she read it, and it was this amazing pilot that was a writing sample. Dan, you'd sent it in really just to be able to talk about doing other stuff, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was hoping that somebody would, uh, you know, do this, but I, I was also sort of like, it's really weird, it's really out there, I, I, it might not, it might be something that's more open, opens the door for me to get in a, some other writer's room. I had never worked in any writer's room before. So it was, oh. it was just, uh, it was kind of a way to get a door open. But uh, Ben sat down with me and was just like, no, screw it, let's actually make it. <laughs> the original version of the pilot had Mark waking up and Helly was more like the seasoned person who sort of come, comes in and and is sort of almost an, like an older sibling uh, character. The first time that I saw Britt for the part and when she read, she sent in a tape and it was this incredible audition tape where she mm -hmm. just did what they call a self tape and she just did the first scene and it was amazing. And I was like, it, for me, I, I saw it and I was like, that's it, this is the person. Reading the script, I was like, this is one of the best roles I've ever read and at least I get to be Helly for today in my bathroom <laughs> and, uh, and, and now sitting in front of everyone here, uh, getting to be Helly <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's very surreal. This is so cool to be here with you guys, because really, um, we've been working, Dan, Dan wrote this, you've, you've been working on it for how many years? 10 years. 10 years, and I, I read it five, plus years ago, and it's been a long process to get it to this point, point. and then even when we were making it, 
we were so happy we were making it, but it was really, you know, at the height of COVID and we were all in this bubble as we all have been. And so to actually like see that there are real people who love the show <laughs> and actually w enough to come out and, and want to talk to us and, and see us. Thank you. So, this is so exciting for all of us yeah. here. Uh, thanks for being I gotta admit, in the early episodes, I was wondering, is this, is, is the twist gonna be that at work, he seems to be this really nice guy, and then when we see him um, in his outside world, he's just a horrible, you know, tyrant, but, but the fact that you had to walk that, that balance a little bit, you're, you're, you're trying to be good in both worlds as best you can. Yeah, I think, you know, early on when we were kind of just circling, the, 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 you know, figuring out how to, how to do it and kind of talking about whether, it would be like two completely different, play it as two completely different characters, or what do we do? And it eventually became, we figured out it was important to, to Dan and Ben and, and me that it feel like the same guy, but just like different parts of the same, different halves almost. Like one of them has like 40 odd years of life experience and like sorrow and joy and all this stuff that goes into that. And then the other one, the other one's like two and a half years old. So, <laughs> uh, so, and so just, you know, it, it became sort of a math problem of addition and subtraction, like of life experience, kind of going back and forth be, between the two. Cause we kind of, we, we shot the whole show pretty much at once, jumping around episode to episode. So we needed to kind of figure out how to you know, what you would do to go back and forth uh, pretty quickly. Devin's one of the only people who is carrying the emotional sobriety of having not been severed. Yes. And she's living in this terrifying reality that the person she arguably loves most in the world is not well. It ultimately became, for me, a storyline about a person who's carrying the weight of everyone around her and doesn't necessarily allow herself to carry her own. Wow. I, I think it was helpful for me to draw on my experiences working in the myriad of different places that I have. You know, in New York, I'm a New York-based actor, and one of the things that we have to do is be able to carry on many different jobs uh, to support uh, the lifestyle in New York, especially. So with that, I had to be able to balance these different hats, um, be able to find the 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 task at hand and be able to deliver you know and also understanding why this guy is who he is and why he does what he does we had the idea that it'll be kind of like a little dance off to get the refiners moving you know and um, they turn on the music and let it roll ben hadn't told us that those lights were installed and that that was going to happen what so it wasn't until we were shooting the scene that suddenly those are switched on and, oh. and Everything is a big deal to us down there. <laughs> and to us as actors who'd been trapped in that room for eight months. So when those lights went up, we were like, oh, it is on. <laughs> Let's do this. It was, I will say, extremely difficult to memorize because it's very random and there's no, it's like, it's just like this random list. So I think it took me like three months to, to oh. memorize it. Even though she's reading it, I just, you know, I wanted to be prepared, um, and you never know, like, on set, they would be like, read it, but the eye line needs to be here and the paper's here, so it was like you just had to remember everything, just in case. Yeah, I just think it's a really relatable human experience, regardless of her gender. She's trapped, she's isolated, and her freedom and autonomy, which are paramount to her, have been taken away. So you see the depths to which she goes to, to fight for that freedom. So much of the concept of the show is about how much of our memory and our experience, uh, it, even if it's not conscious, we carry with us yeah. and is suppressed. And that was one of the conversations we had a lot with the actors, almost in every scene, was how much of who they are on the outside is, is informing what's going on, on with their innie, even if they're not conscious of it. Your Audis are really good for masking up and being here today for us. <laughs> wow.